Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hi, this is Amit Doshi, and I wanted to thank each and every one of our listeners. It's been two years since I founded IBM, and it's been an amazing two years. We wanted to learn a little bit more about who is listening to our shows, and so we put together a short survey. The survey is anonymous, and we aren't going to be collecting any personal information. I would really appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes out of your day and go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and fill it out. Thanks, and please keep listening. Hello and welcome to a new episode of IVM Likes. Today I'm in the studio with Naveen and Josh again. Again, hey, yes. yes. Hi guys. We never left. We just, That's yeah. right. We've just been, been recording this for the past week. We've just been sitting here and discussing, discussing stuff. Discussing yeah, stuff. Slowly rotting. All right. So today we're going to do um, our usual round of recommendations of a TV show, a book, and movie, and then we're going to discuss some documentaries that we love and recommend. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start with Naveen, who has a secret book to recommend. Yes, he won't tell us what uh, it is, by the way. So I think like a lot of people will laugh at me when I talk about this. But then this book, this book is called Six Boys and a Minivan, and this I read when I was in seventh grade. And for the longest time, it has stayed with me. You know, <laughs> see, 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 I was not even six <laughs> boys and a minivan, and you read it in seven grade. grade. But it's a that's... good story. The, the whole point of the the book is that there's a kid called Patrick who's basically lost his father, like not lost him, but then the father just left him and went away. Hmm. And now uh, he's the only man, and he's supposed to be taking care of his mother. His mother's not well, but he just basically does not want to leave his old family life, where they had a nice mansion and a house and everything. And the sisters like working very hard to make sure that. They can make ends meet, and in the meanwhile, he befriends a farmer called Philip, who is a nice guy and who generally wants him to come to the to the light side. You know, he talks about Jesus and everything, mm. and tries to convince him to become a better person. But on the other hand, there's a gang of vagabonds led by a guy called Cyril, who basically are just good for nothings. And their idea once is to basically steal a minivan and go to the Swiss Alps and ski. From there on, like they steal a guy's minivan, and the accident happens, and now they have to figure out a way to come back to like you know it's a lot like sleepers, but nothing wrong happens to them. They just get uh, sent to jail, and then they now have to figure out a way to uh, you know bring their life back to normal. And hmm. uh, as a seven as a seventh grader, I was like, what the hell am I reading? This is so intense. It was pretty intense. Like, this is the first time I heard the word remorse, or you know, like uh, or uh, something like phallic. These were words which were not supposed to be used back then. And uh, it's a great book about. Finding yourself, uh, finding the right company, and redeeming yourself as a person, hmm. and it's pretty straightforward. It's, How it's good... old are the boys in the book? They're all thirteen, fourteen. Oh, okay. So Cyril is the only biggest guy, fifteen-year-old, who's a bastard who basically, like, you know, convinces these guys that mm. you you have to be a little bit of a of a vagabond to mm. be cool. So these guys all follow him, and he leads them into a shit. That's what. Oh. All right, all right. Who's the author of this book? Uh, it's a guy called uh, R. De Morex. It's a, it's a basically so be, people usually read this book in Bible hmm. study and all that. Correct. When you're growing up, correct. Oh. And there's a strong uh, religious element to it, but right. it's not pushed in your face. It's just like it's a story, hmm. and they turn things around for themselves. Hmm. There's no spoiler or anything. It's a nice story about losing yourself and finding yourself. That's it. And oh, it does remain all all time favorite for me. That's why people say. Did you read it as like part of religious studies for you? No, no, no. I was at my cousin's during vacation, and this was like one of the lots of books that he would give me. So every time I went for vacation with my cousins, we would exchange books. And Best. This was one of those things that you know just ended up with me. I still have it. Hmm. I tried giving it to my niece, but she's a dumb <laughs> piece of shit. Who doesn't read? So. <laughs> All right, Josh. Let's get that movie recommendation. Okay, so the movie I'm going to recommend today is Candyman. Nice. Has anyone seen Candyman? Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a classic. Of the genre of horror movies, anyway, um, it came out in '94. It was directed by this guy called Bernard Rose, who also directed this film called Mr. Nice Guy, hmm. which is about the pot smoking dealer guy. Yeah. Hmm. The film is basically it's a slasher movie, and uh, it features n- none other than the Candyman, who's played by Tony Todd. Who, if you know anything about Tony Todd, he's very famous for voiceovers, hmm. and he's got this very kind of baritone voice. Hmm. Right. But what is so amazing about this film is um, is just the script, man. Because the whole thing begins with this idea of an urban legend. Mm. And then bang, in the middle of the film, there is a twist. Mm. As in the, the thing just suddenly turns into this other film and it becomes this kind of psychological paranoia mm. thing. Ooh, okay. So what kind of starts is like, okay, it's going to be urban legend. Candyman's going to come. He's going to be killing people and all. It just doesn't turn out to be that. It's this whole thing about how this kind of woman starts going crazy, you know, oh, okay. while she's investigating this Candyman thing. This sounds a lot like Shrooms. Have you, heard, have you watched Shrooms? No. It's a very similar concept. 
concept are you talking about the movie or the experience <laughs> <laughs> the both <laughs> i've had premonitions on both ayyo <laughs> but uh, shroom is a movie about about like a girl who thinks that there's a slasher running mm. around behind them mm. but in the end and it's revealed that she's been tripping on mushrooms and she's the one killing everybody <laughs> oh shit <laughs> <laughs> One thing that was aw- awesome also about the film is this the music is done by Philip Glass hmm. who yeah. I happen to be oh, a, a fan nice. of also yeah mm. so his music for that for like a horror film it was it was really nice How old so, is the movie now 94 it came oh, okay. out Okay yeah so now it's wow 20 years old So yeah. classic recommendation of classic. slasher films Yeah we're yeah. all nice. going old school today Yeah <laughs> oh I'm going super new school guys Ooh. I'm recommending this TV show called This Is Us uh, it just finished season 1 this week It's a little difficult to describe the show without giving out any spoilers because it's one of those shows where every episode has like this super emotional manipulative twist. Okay? The basic premise is that you're following four people who share the same birthday. They're in different timelines. One is in the 90s, one is in the 70s, one is in the 80s, then you come to like the real time 2017 and you're following four people. Mm. Uh one um who's a African American boy trying to find his biological dad. one girl who struggles with weight issues one actor who's trying to break out of the you know pretty boy mold mm. and there's a guy who uh, who's trying to be like a better father and a better husband and he has three children coming on the on the way and he has like an alcoholism problem so he's dealing with that there are three four separate stories we're following how do you have three children coming along the way they have triplets okay <laughs> Who is planned in advance and everything? <laughs> Family plan. Every yeah. nine months, one thing. Uh, <laughs> the thing with this show is that it is really obvious in the way it builds the story out. Where you kind of uh, once you watch like two episodes, you know that every episode, whatever you believe, they're probably going to like try and twist it. Hmm. It goes big on those like yours is a massive surprise. You did not expect this, hmm. but it also and it it is it feels sometimes a little manipulative, hmm. but it is also really really nice and warm and like it's like one of those things where every week I watch it and I cry and I feel like I'm being hugged at the same time. <laughs> um, it is uh, well written. The relationships are really well written. They feel so real. The fights that they show in the family. It's a hmm. re- it's a family drama for sure. It hmm. is like one of those parenthood type of shows. But what really makes it even better is the cast because mm. they have Mandy Moore on it they have Sterling oh, K Brown nice. from People vs OJ Mandy Moore 90s Mandy Moore Yeah yeah the only really? Mandy Moore yeah. there is she is oh, really good she's a show. choreographer yeah. singer actor dancer everything yeah oh, she's shit. really good I have no idea. also one of the main leads is uh, Milo Ventimiglia who played uh, Jess Mariano in Girl- Gilmore Girls so that's why mm. I started watching the show <laughs> because in the trailer like very very <laughs> obviously they started the trailer with like a shot of his butt and like okay i'm in <laughs> clearly i'm going to watch this show but i still recommend the show because it is one of those family dramas that's written with enough story and enough plot that still makes me want to watch it sure there are some episodes that feel like this is too much mm. uh because they're going for the big emotions but when they go funny and when they go real it it's really nice uh it's called this is us you can find it on hotstar in india Uh, you should check it out if you want to, like you know, if you want like a nice weekly cry, uh. you know, uh, which yeah. is sometimes good. It's cathartic. It's This nice. for me is every day morning traveling <laughs> trains, but yeah. <laughs> Next time I'll watch that thing and cry and some un- under a man's armpit. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> the triple the crying. <laughs> All right, so um, Naveen recommended a book for us. It's yes, called Six Boys and a Minivan. And, Bye. Uh, try not looking for for it on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's called uh, Six Boys and a Minivan by <laughs> R. Demaurex. And Josh Can- recommended. M- mine is uh, Candyman from 1994 horror film. And I'm recommending This Is Us, an NBC TV show. And uh, let's take a break right now and come back and we'll discuss our favorite documentaries. Mm. Yeah. Rants, crazy conversations, absurd questions, and everything in between. Cyrus says is the podcast where I, <coughs> Cyrus Brocha, let loose and talk to interesting people from across different walks of life. Oh uh, well, people who are available actually, not more than that. Catch new episodes every Monday on iTunes, Audio Boom, or the all-new IVM Podcast app. Happy listening, but only for a few minutes. All right, welcome back from the break. Uh, I'm in the studio with Josh and Naveen, yeah. and we're discussing our favorite documentaries. I'm actually not a big documentary person. Hmm. I do watch some documentary TV shows though that are like um that only because they hey hey I'm I'm really a big <laughs> bigger fan of fiction, you know. Fan of fan. Um so some of the my favorite documentary TV shows which I do watch are of course Planet Earth which is hmm. one of my all time oh, favorites. Yes. Yeah. The greatest. Yeah, absolutely the greatest. Yeah. Visual treat. Yeah. I yeah. also really enjoy Chef's Table. because yeah. i mean it combines cooking and that visual treat element mm. plus classical music uh, to people cooking and <laughs> abstract so is fascinating. Uh, out abstract now. was also on my list it's a design show which is also really interesting i haven't finished watching it yet though yeah. have you 
I watched three episodes. Oh, okay. I've only watched the yeah. first one yet. The guy with the Nike shoes who came up with like oh yeah, nice pretty nice. cool. I mean they're really long though. I uh, that's my only. But again, like the visual storytelling and yeah. music that they use nowadays, yeah. and I think documentary filmmaking has gone beyond that in so many ways. Right. Uh, sitting to watch something like Making a Murderer, for example. That was, I was. Going I don't. To why say. am I saying Making a Murderer every time? It is Making a Murderer. It is Making a Murderer. Yeah, it's not How to Get Away with Murder. <laughs> 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 how to make a murder. How to make a murder. <laughs> how to make a murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's an instruction document. Yeah. How to make, make a murder. <laughs> Making uh, a murder was so so good. It so was good, surprisingly yeah. amazing. Yeah, and for documentary to have me on like hook and then make it make me watch the next episode again, mm. I think they've come a long way. Mm. But I'll start off with my recommendation for sure. uh, documentary again. Like I'm full on feels today. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm all about like so. Buzzfeed had this list out which said you have to watch these seventeen documentaries if mm. you have like this. And I went to the list, but one really caught my attention, uh, which was because it was available on YouTube. So right. like, this is so easy. Of course. So I just clicked on it and. And ended up watching one and a half hours of this, and I cried like a baby oh God, at the end of called? it. It's called Dear Zachary. Uh, I've seen Dear Zachary. Yeah, it's oh uh, directed by a guy called Kurt Quinn, and uh, the movie is a personal ode to this uh, kid who's uh, about to come into the world, and it's the best friend's kid, and the best friend of his, uh, Andrew, has been murdered by his own to be wife, and she's now carrying the baby. So through the course of the documentary, you learn that uh, this woman is a psychopath, and uh, they fell in love under the weirdest circumstances. But this guy, Andrew, was the sweetest guy ever. He has known him for the longest time. They were kids, and they were friends together for the longest time. So he has all these memorabilia, and he st- shows them. But half way through the film, it takes a massive flip, and then you're just left like you have goosebumps. Like even when I'm talking about it, I have yeah. goosebumps. Mm. Yeah. But it's a, such a powerful emotional story of a of a person uh, so wrong, mm. and nobody yeah. could do anything but yeah. just because she had. A baby in a stomach. Yeah, I watched it. I think because you told me about yeah, it, yeah, and yeah, oh god, it was genuinely amazing. It it, it makes you question humanity in 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 the general term. You know, like what is wrong with this woman? Why yeah. why are people like this? Hmm. It's it's a good documentary. It's well made in terms of also filmmaking style that he uses is very because you know that he's making this as he goes along and somewhere along the way he only found out that you know mm. this is what my documentary should be and he changes the track and you see that so that's really remarkable all right yeah so, that's pretty interesting josh you have one that you want to talk about for yes. some time now <laughs> yeah cuz recently i watched the uh, oj made in america Right. which won mm. the this year's academy award for best documentary and it's a pretty epic documentary because even though it's in the documentary feature it's like seven and a half hours yeah. long yeah it's the longest documentary that's ever won or something like that i i can imagine that but they've split it up into five sort of one and a half hour parts mm. but what is so awesome about so the basically the the documentary is about the case against uh, is about oj simpson yeah. essentially yeah yeah and uh, part of it covers the case but it's very chronological in the sense that they start off with why he w- like why he was a famous footballer hmm. goes into like what his relationship with the african american hmm. community is and also shows you the context of like from uh, when the civil rights movement started in the 60s i think it was hmm. and then till um, going up to the case against oj and just through this whole story what the the, the director of this film is a guy called ezra edelman who's yeah. like a black jewish guy and um he's done such a good job because he's uh, sort of divided between like all the incidences with the LAPD where blacks have been sort of um, really violently beaten or just treated mistreated hmm. completely and where justice hasn't yeah. been uh, served to that community you know so with that context with OJ's case cuz OJ is like a guy who's kind of distancing himself from the community as well so the whole documentary is just it's one it's riveting but also it's like um this it's like a nihilistic comment mm. on how maybe dysfunctional the justice system is yeah. mm. because at the same like it's not serving the black community at the same time in this moment when it's supposed to actually deliver justice it doesn't mm. because in the face of all this protest and in the face of like because uh, what the mainstream justice wanted was this guy to go to jail right. but then that didn't Correct. happen you know right so how exactly that happened yeah oj's case has been always the most uh, convoluted yeah. story that we've learned we yeah. know the story but we still want to really watch and i learn. thought i yeah. knew the story yeah. Yeah. i just knew he got off for yeah. murder that because much i watched I the kuba gooding junior Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask. You should. Wa- yeah, I was just going to say you should watch People vs OJ now, which is yeah. the fictionalized version of the of the case, mm. and that's also really good. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good. But this man, one thing about this document, it is so 
riveting like i want yeah. to watch it again the thing with with like i i tried try to watch people versus oj and uh-huh. the documentary i just find it so frustrating that i i just get i'm just like i i don't want to know i don't mm. want to know how f***ed up things are mm. i just can't deal with it but yeah so then you should not watch warner hazard <laughs> because oh his God. documentary is just f- you up so bad he he follows why? penguins and tries to understand why penguins are not swimming properly ha, in the entire but Warner Herzog will not leave you with such a yeah. his documentaries are good <laughs> no they they, they they are twisted they're not so twisted maybe you're some twisted. of them are twisted some <laughs> of right, them are guys, twisted not all of them are down. twisted All right, yes, let, but, let but me recommend <laughs> one. Let me recommend one that that's um not controversial. Yeah, non controversial, really good. Uh it's a documentary I watched last year called The Barkley Marathon. Mm. Um the I mean the whole name is The Barkley Marathon, the race that eats its young. Mm. So in 1977, there's a guy called James Earl Ray who was arrested for assassinating Martin Luther King Jr. Mm. Um he escaped from prison okay. in this in the woods basically and he was out for 55 hours before he was caught and he only covered like 13 kilometers. in that 13 miles actually in those 55 mm. hours so one of the guys who used to live close by like you know all these people who used to live close by and and had followed this chase that was happening about this murder who was on the loose one guy called um, Gary Cantrell was like 55 hours and he only covered 13 miles i could mm. do 100 mm. so he decided to set up a race in those words mm. it's basically a looping race where there's no maps there's no um, directions there are no aid stations on the way the race lasts for 60 hours Mm-hmm. 60 hours you're on your you you're running completely throughout like you have to finish a loop and there's a triple loop basically mm-hmm. what's really fun about this is that only 40 runners apply there's really no way 40 runners are selected actually from a bunch of like uh, applicants mm-hmm. but there's it's not advertised how to apply mm-hmm. right okay. the application process is usually a mystery mm-hmm. and when you apply you have to write an essay on um <laughs> why i should be allowed to run the barkley Hmm. and you have to give them 1 dollar and 60 cents as application fee and one thing that gary wants that year like one year he wants white shirts so as a part of the application you have to send him white shirts <laughs> or socks whatever he wants whatever he feels like yeah. because it's, it's like not the willy wonka of jungle running right so hmm. people come in um, and once they're selected they get like a letter of condolence <laughs> saying you've been selected hmm. so they come in it's an unmarked trail and they have literally that 60 hours they've trained for a long time to run this trail uh very few people complete the trail at all but the year that this documentary was shot 2012 three people in fact made it to the final round nice. the final loop so there's like a, a beginning and an end and no middle there's a beginning and it loops three times okay. and it comes back to the start point okay, okay. right the race starts uh, at midnight um when gary lights a cigarette that starting point <laughs> everybody starts running every time somebody taps out a guy plays uh, like a trumpet hmm. so everybody can know that one person oh, is out right now this is hunger games yeah it's almost hunger yeah, games yeah. it it is because there's bruises and they're bleeding and they're on their feet for 60 hours in the middle of the night in a forest nice it is like most people don't don't last that is why the the But documentary they die is called, or they just come back no no of course yeah. they can't nobody dies there <laughs> will be the actual hunger games no no <laughs> nobody dies uh, i think but what's really interesting is so the, since there's no um stations right how mm. do you prove that you ran the loop so there are 11 books hidden in mm. those loops and every time you get there if you're runner number 30 mm. you got to take page number 30 out of that book by the end when you make that loop you got to prove that you were there on all the stations oh. that you passed the whole pa- like so the whole way the you got to have all the pages page number 30 of each book that was on that trail something oh. flies away in the middle then you <laughs> oh yeah they have those bags that's fine but mm. it's it's genuinely like a really uh, difficult race and Oh, oh my god, I watched it and it was one of those things where it's one of course it's visually beautiful because you're watching people run in a forest. Mm. Secondly, such a um, like endurance of human spirit where these guys there's really no reason to watch it. You like to run it, to win it, there's no point. You win nothing. Yeah. It's just a personal thing that they want to achieve, that they want to test their body and their mm. like how much they can take. Uh, it's really really interesting. You should check it out. It's called the Barkley Marathon. It's on Netflix. Yes. Awesome. I want to recommend one more sh- uh, documentary that I'm going to tell you as much as little as possible about. Mm. It's called Tickled. Mm. <laughs> um I would I suggest this. that you don't watch the promos, don't watch, don't read about it, about it. Just go watch it. Mm. It's a really in- interesting show because uh sorry, movie because it's a journalist from New Zealand who writes light entertainment stuff like you know, oh here's a world's largest pumpkin or whatever. That kind of stuff. Mm. He found some videos once online of two guys uh 
tickling each other competitive <laughs> endurance tickling started to write about it because it was so funny but then as as he started to really go into the like to see find out like who made these videos who's paying these artists it's like you know the the cd underbelly of the tickling world <laughs> uh, he got threats in the middle their funding got pulled out uh, they went on kickstarter it finally released last year in fact the guy who they who the documentary is actually about threatened them multiple times like at screenings and then tickle basically made like an hbo de- uh, debut last month or like last year i think uh, and it's got a lot of coverage but it's one of those things where you can't really get this guy yet because there's not enough legal things that follow him hmm. there is a money trail hmm. there is obvious abuse trail so but tickle mafia yeah it is awful it's so <laughs> creepy because you start out watching it as like is this funny yeah. it's also really physically uncomfortable to watch because okay. you're watching two guys tickle it's non sexual guys hmm. it's just tickling <laughs> it is so creepy I, i literally had like i was like i feel like somebody is walking on my skin it is really also very interesting but please watch it i know i didn't make it sound like <laughs> you should totally watch it, it, it sounds, i never feel good. ticklish it sounds good oh, you should definitely I'm watch it i'm extremely yeah. ticklish you should definitely watch Maybe it maybe you're too ticklish anyway. if you're ticklish or not yeah, you should, you should watch, watch it, it. <laughs> see if you can watch it together and make it jada comfortable yeah mm. it's called tickle tickle in the it's middle. also on netflix nice. why do you guys like do you guys have a like, a preference of documentaries over like at a time that you'll watch documentaries versus other movies yeah. at night <laughs> i usually just watch documentaries really? at night yeah. i'm i'm re- I, i mean i'm not a documentary person i almost always watch fictional stuff because mm. i just find that at least it's fictional mm. it's not the, this is not the f- world that we live in you mm. know i find documentaries to be a little bit too overwhelming i don't like documentaries that are based on people you know like lot of lot of oh, like music documentaries yeah like yeah. music or even like people who are famous and stuff like how mm. they got there mm. that is not important i i like broken characters mm. i like uh, flawed people who are trying to mend ways but it only gets worse for them yeah. i like that kind of stuff because the world but, is awful yeah but once in a while there's a nice funny documentary yeah. as well like super high me yeah, oh, which was a parody of super size me right. mm. uh, where a guy went on a mcdonald's diet for 30 days and then went off it to see how his body reacts to it uh, doug benson was a comic did the same thing and he's a major stoner so he did that yeah. by like not smoking for 30 days and then smoking for 30 days to see how he feels mm. and in the whole process like it's funny but it also points out the the whole war against uh, marijuana that's mm. raging and people who are actually carrying licenses yeah. and medical marijuana is available in certain parts but still people will try to you know push them away for no reason if we're talking about um pot can i suggest one thing so there's a you know wise one and then come back <laughs> <laughs> that is always box. a recommendation it's hot box mm. studio i get um, likes so wise land uh, the tv channel that launched mm. they have a show called weed etiquette yeah uh, where they do document like it's a documentary tv show so there's uh, it's called one, weed etiquette no weed etiquette weed etiquette i think so it's this a amalgamation of two words yeah weed right? etiquette Vidicate. Vidicate. Vidicate what? That sounds I, awful. I can't remember now. So the first episode is um, children who suffer from life threatening diseases learning like trying mm. to use hash oil or pot and like it's one of those super creepy ones because those kids like their eyes just like <laughs> dilate like in a sudden like they are fed these drugs because mm. their parents believe that this is the only way to help them they are Mm. they are definitely uh, you know fighting these like diseases Conditions. there's no yeah, way to yeah. like yeah. Th- there's no medicines it's not working and they're all fighting against um the government to get these legalized for children <laughs> but right now it's still illegal children. so the kids are just, like, sitting in the corner days as well yeah they're mm. super high these kids are doing a ton of drugs like because <laughs> it's the dose that's required and they go to school or they go to play and it's set to such music where the kids are just super high like on a swing it's super scary to watch which also really interesting yeah do you watch um, any um, music documentaries that you really like josh music documentary I mean the most famous one I know is uh, that I've seen is Dig. Have you mm. seen Dig? Yeah. That one is about the Brian Jonestown right. massacre. That was a good music doc. But out of doc my favorite documentary like all time is this one called Crumb which is about a a comic book artist. Mm. But it's a, I like it because it's kind of it acts as a kind of essay saying like why art is important because like out of his whole family like his whole family was so dysfunctional mm. and so weird. But he was the only guy that kind of pursued his art and um smashed it but he's also a weirdo but he's not as weird as the rest of his family right. like, i think the only music documentary i watched because i felt like i like was um the kurt cobain one and mm. i watched it only because i feel like I, i i wanted to understand the fandom enough which which kurt cobain one it's called cobain 
Cobain. Yeah. Because I've seen one called Curtain Courtney. No, not that one. Not that yeah, one. Yeah, no, just Cobain, oh I think. God, Cobain. I'm a big fan of Nick Broomfield, man. Mm. His whole, like, the leader, his driver and his driver's right. wife. He did Curtain Courtney. He did Biggie and Tupac also. Oh. There's yeah. one called Amy, which is about Amy Winehouse. Which yeah, is, that uh, I haven't seen. That's supposed to be really good, Yeah, no? and this Indian guy only directed it. Yeah. An Indian guy based in America. Mm. Who also directed this movie called Senna. Mm. It's about... Oh, yeah. Uh, about Art and Senna. Right? Art and Senna, ah. yeah. yeah. Asif, and, Kapadia. Uh, Asif Kapadia. Asif Kapadia. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. So, that's he... And, and his document is also very well made and very well researched. Yeah, yeah. And uh, visually also very enticing. So, I think Amy Winehouse is a proper... Mm. Uh, study case I have to see of this. like yeah. fame gone wrong correct, and all that correct. Correct. that's a, a whole bunch of documentaries we've recommended right now if you like any other documentaries and want to recommend something to us please find us on Facebook Twitter Instagram we are IVM Podcasts and uh, we'll be back next week with a new episode yes and hopefully we'll leave the studio by then we should, we should leave guys Hey man, just help me out, man. I need some, I need some podcast, man. I haven't had a fix in a week. Just need some. Don't you worry about it. I got podcasts galore for you, man. Just go to ivmpodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks, man. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs>